Hey you guys, welcome to the beginning of April. I don't want to dwell on this too much because we just promoted a ton of soldiers and stuff, but I thought you might be curious to look at how the stats exactly look uh, with regard to my roster and the classes. My assaults by far are dominating the higher leveled soldiers. There should be no surprise to get a lot of kills on missions. They're also probably the first class that I prioritized leveling. They're great at UFOs in the beginning of the game. I also really want to get an assault high level to be a good covert operative. So that's that. And then we've got a, we've got a couple of Lance Corporal Gunners, largely because Van Dorn was added to the roster. Uh, Kelly was the one loss from March. And a good mix of specialists. Every type of specialist except assault, actually. All of my assaults made it to Lance Corporal already. So, that's cool. We don't have to worry about who's an officer and who's not, and who's going to get mech'd and who's going to become a scion and stuff just yet. But at some point, we'll start to wonder. This relative strength column is exciting as far as knowing who's progressing at an above average pace and who's going at a below average pace. Can pick out some really good level up roles here. Orlova's specialist role was great. Alai Wola's been good for both specialist and Lance Corporal roles. Uh, what else is going on? Also, why does he have five out of perks? Oh, because he got steadfast. Right, right, right. Uh, friendlies doing amazingly, but he did start off amazing. My Rocketeers are doing pretty well. My infantry, some of them, not the best. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think that my snipers all have very, very high above average aim, which is no surprise because they started with 72, but nice to see that they're all still up there. All right, let's take a look at the budget for the month next. All right, so this is a very, very rough budget. Whoa, I'm white. There's so much light coming off this screen. Um, very rough budget, but we do know what missions to expect because we know what the alien resource level is and we know what the XCOM threat level was. That's because I'm using a mod, but it's also predictable. 2-1 um, uh, April is very, very normal. If you shoot down all the small scouts and go to all the abduction missions, you'll get a 2 on April, I think, every time. Um, assuming you don't run into a harvest or something like that. And for a an April where the aliens have two resources and XCOM threat level is one, you get these missions. Uh, five abductions, I'm expecting roughly 120 bucks from each. That's counting, you know, the reward for going on the mission plus selling corpses or whatever. One terror mission, not expecting much from this at all. Uh, just some corpses, a couple of alloys and Illyrium from floater corpses. Uh, this is sort of iffy because there are resources other than dollars in XCOM which matter, but I'm just tracking dollars, which maybe later in the game we'll have to change that, but this is working for now. One research mission, that means a uh, a landing UFO, I believe that at this stage in the game it will almost certainly be a small scout, but it will just be a landed small scout, which means intact power source, intact nav computers, it ends up being a little bit more valuable than a crash landed scout would be, that's why it's, I'm counting it as double the value of the four scouts. That's both because I'm expecting them not to have the intact UFO pieces and because there's a chance that you know one of them gets away or something like that. Two harvest missions. I always assume that I'm not going to catch the aliens on their harvest missions because they can send them to any country in the world. So I assume that I won't catch them and if I do it's a nice bonus to the budget. One hunt mission. That's going to be a fighter sent at one of the satellites. That's why we have stingray missiles equipped on interceptors. There's only one of them, but we need to have at least two interceptors ready to go when that happens. I'm expecting a hundred bucks. I'm expecting to shoot this thing down. Two bombing missions. Almost certainly this will happen over countries I don't have satellites over. And one council mission, which I think on average, maybe pessimistically, I'm expecting to get 150 bucks out of that for a total of $1,770. That's quite a lot. Now my expenses are actually considerably lower than the income. 
I'm expecting to spend quite a lot of money on interceptors. I think I budgeted for four. Realistically, I might want more than that. We're gonna have to see how the month goes. I do have room because I, I have fewer expenses than income and I also have 400 bucks sitting in base right now already. The opposite training school is gonna have to happen. Gonna grab a power facility, which I think costs 120. I don't remember exactly. I'd like to get a workshop going, maybe. No, I'm not gonna be able to get two because I don't have enough engineers for it yet, but that could be nice too. Excavation happening, access lift to get started on buildings on the next level next month. That's sort of the, the immediately cool things that I would like to have. All right, let's jump into the actual gameplay now. All right, hello, welcome to April. Absolute first thing I'm gonna do. I have 450 bucks sitting around and I'm gonna spend that money. I'm going to start by transferring Lieutenant Pagan Temple. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have another continent or two dedicated to just repairing interceptors. So, the aliens are going to have the most ships flying over Asia, most likely, since they already took Australia. There's a small chance that an interceptor stationed on another continent detects UFOs that are flying. So I'm going to send Lieutenant Pagan Temple to repair in Asia. I'm going to grab a, another UFO. I want to keep at a healthy roster of six active interceptors for this month. I'm also going to switch Serrano Peppers to Stingrays. So, two avalanche missile interceptors should be enough to deal with any scouts that come my way. The thing that I'm really preparing for is any raider. If the aliens send raiders on their scouting missions, I need 3.5 interceptors on average to bring them down, and stingrays are slightly more effective than avalanches. So that's really important. A raider would be a big mission as far as income. Potentially two intact power sources, although realistically that's not going to happen. Hey, I was right. I'm guessing they have something else in mind. It does cost 120. So I'm going to grab the officer training school as well. And there you go. There goes 450 bucks. All right, we have 16 days for our next satellite. Alien weaponry will be here soon. I didn't include any scopes in the budget. I probably should have. I'll probably grab a couple of those. Um, I think there are more important things at this exact moment. Maybe I have time to squeeze in two, though. Other than that, I believe we're good to go. The barracks is starting to clean up a little bit. We've got a uh, couple of squads ready to go, really. This is all good. Engineering's good. Requests are just for satellites, which I can't give. And as far as stores, we have very little. Certainly not enough that we'd want to spend or sell a bunch of stuff to buy something right now. Alright, so all we have to do here is spin the globe. Also, I've forgotten. Is it five abductions? Did I say five abductions and four scouts? I, I do need to know this. I'm going to assume that it's five abductions and four scouts. One fighter. One terror mission. One council mission. The missions really pick up in April, and we have to deal with floaters and thin men now. So, this is going to be a fun month. Hopefully, we have a strong enough team trained up to deal with it. All right. We've got stingrays ready to go. Still waiting on that next interceptor. So if you want to do this, you have to keep in mind the aircraft doesn't repair while it's transferring. So I just lost two days in the repair time, and then I'll lose another two days sending it back. So to repair for seven days, I'm adding four days onto the time it takes for this to be ready to go. Still, though, it's worth it. Uh, I need to be above six interceptors, and there's nothing else to do except transfer the ones that need to repair to somewhere else. 
Okay, UFO has bombed targets in South Africa. So out of the two bombing missions, we've had one. Your request from Egypt, they want a satellite. I would have gotten told if they wanted sectoid corpses. That's too bad. It really sucks to have all of your requests filled up with satellite transfers when you really want to be giving your sectoid corpses away. Contact detected. Okay. So our first contact is going to be a scout. Uh, pretty straightforward how I'm going to deal with this. I'm just sending the avalanche missile interceptors after it on aggressive. Nothing's changed since March as far as this contact. The only difference is going to be what I do after this, depending on how much damage we take. Alright, that thing's smoking real bad. Also, oh yeah, another couple of things happened. I... One other thing happened, which is that I got good interception time on it, meeting it, and it's really close to my interceptor base. Because of that, I'm going to try sending Stingray missiles after it. I think one Stingray missile will bring it down, and there will be a lower chance of destroying the UFO. I don't want to destroy it. I want it to crash land so I can send soldiers, get experience, get slightly more resources than I'd get by destroying it as well. Um, that was a good interception by Tripper. I'm still probably going to have to transfer him to another continent and buy a replacement, though. Okay. I just really hope that if this doesn't sink it... Okay, that's perfect! Perfect, absolutely great. Commander to the research labs. Commander to the research labs. What's going on in the research labs? What? Oh, I just finished alien weaponry while I was intercepting. I, appreciate your efforts to support the <laughs> I don't think that's ever happened before. I've already put the new recruits to work in the lab. That's really interesting. Okay, so beam lasers are next. 16 day research time. That's brought down considerably. That would be a priority research task, Commander. Yep. I'll begin allocating resources to the project immediately. Yep. Because I'm up to 15 scientists already, thanks to those sectoid corpse requests, and I think one scientist between months? Did I get two? Oh, I got two actually. Alright. I sneeze so much when I'm talking. It's because I'm like in a fairly dusty room and then when I'm talking I guess I breathe more or differently. I don't know. So I'm gonna go uh, raid this UFO and then probably what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get back and transfer Tripper to another continent. I don't think that I want to switch a Stingray to Avalanche here, because I'm about to get another Avalanche from a new Interceptor purchase. So I think we're good. Let's go uh, do this mission though. What have we got? Riparian. Alright. And this is the beginning of April. The aliens just got much stronger and my soldiers have not gotten stronger at all. So I'm going to take a fairly strong team here. Take a very strong sniper. A very strong gunner. I should check and see. I could wait 22 hours, 13 hours, 7 hours for you, 23 hours for you. I don't really have any of my good infantry ready to go. I could wait 23 hours for Sarajevo. It's possibly even worth it. I think I'll pass. And spend, send Freaky on the mission. Alaiwola, my strong assault. How many ranks do I have so far? 20... like 30 something. I really am in a power trough right now because I'm gonna have squad size 
one pretty soon and be able to take seven soldiers on missions. So I might actually go with a full class soldier roster here. I also don't really need... Let's see, I have 6, 12, 18, 24. Yeah, 24 class soldiers is a really good place to be right now. So I don't really need any more. I could bring a medic. What if we did that? Since the medic is sort of like a rookie anyway. Okay, so I'm going to bring a medic. My sniper definitely, definitely needs a ceramic plate. I'll bring a second med kit too, just in case. Gunner, we're at a point where I want people to have as much hit points as possible, probably. Go with ceramic plate and a med kit on you. No, I don't need that many med kits. Let's give you the tracker then. Slap a ceramic plate and a smoke grenade on my assault in case he's not able to move forward. He can still support the team. Glenn friendly fr Hold on. I just realized something. One thing that I really do need is a marksman scope to turn my scouts into squad set range soldiers. This is a big deal. I think it's more powerful than the scopes that you're getting. Although the scopes are great too. Let's start building that now. In the meantime though, let's go with the ceramic plate. I still like having the sawed off shotgun. I still think we can get away without a battle scanner. Although I do have a sniper now. And a rocketeer. Okay, let's bring a battle scanner then. I'll show you guys how this works. My Rocketeer unfortunately needs to bring Ceramic Plate. Give her a Salt Carbine and a Shredder Rocket. And my Medic is gonna sort of be a rookie for the mission. I'll give her a Flashbang just because I don't have one. Now that we're dealing with Thin Men and Floaters, I get to bring far fewer consumables because I'm really worried about the health bars of my soldiers. Maybe that doesn't make sense, but yeah, lots of ceramic plates on this team. Right. Touching down. So we get to go straight into the mission. Our AO is within the continental United States. It looks like we got lucky. The alien crash site is in a remote area, away from any major city centers. We should get down there and secure the site ASAP. Sweet as Bradford. This is my favorite uh, small crash site map and lighting. This swamp has like three different lightings you can play it on, and this one is just sublime. I love it. This is Big Sky, which is north of the crash site. Strike one is in position to engage. Loud and clear, Big Sky. We'll monitor those readings from here. Strike one is authorized to assault the alien craft. It's almost enough to make you forget that you're defending the world from alien invasion. Okay, let's try to get some meld, because I did bring a very, very strong team. And chances are quite good that I don't need a team this strong. Although floaters are a very, very large proportion of the alien composition in April. And floaters are just a nightmare. So we have an extra five tiles that are safe. Okay, so I'm, yeah, trying to find Meld, that's why I'm moving so quickly through this map. I just realized I haven't played this map before in this campaign. Definitely floaters out there. So next turn I'm going to get one, two, three, four, an audio indicator, and at that point I don't have to worry so much about using this motion tracker to move forward. It's a very large map, so it's not too big a surprise that I was able to make two dash moves without even getting within 25 tiles of any naughty. What I'm trying to do here is the UFO is 
in here. So I'm trying to get any meld that's to the left, if there is any. If there's meld to the right, what I'm doing is making it tougher to get. That is for sure. But hopefully there will be a can to our left and we can grab it, because we have not been getting meld very much this campaign. Okay, we hear floaters near the UFO. We didn't hear any meld. Gross. Alright. Definitely could be the case that there's no meld on the map. Not being able to see meld and fog of war really makes the game harder. Whew. Okay, there we go. Meld straight ahead and meld to the right, unfortunately. Because those are the two places I didn't go. Okay, I'm gonna blow the last motion tracker charge here. I should have turned it on before I moved. Holy crap, there's two cans over there. Alright, let's get that meld. That's what we're for. And we have contact just past it. Making a run for it. We've been moving so quickly. There it is. And another two are at the left. We've been moving so quickly that we should be able to grab this. I'm pretty sure I'm just able to get into here. It would suck if I'm wrong. Uh, I should be fine to get into here too. Oh my god, give me that meld. Yes. Yes, I want that. Ooh. You hear that? What are they doing over there? Okay, now I'm gonna use the battle scanner. Let's see if I can tag this pod I just heard to our uh, flank. Sweeping. Two floaters. Okay, that's not super intimidating. I'm not sure if they're moving or not. Um, let's make sure that this is safe to do before I do it. Let's just make sure that this doesn't pull anything. Okay, I'm going to dash my Rocketeer over. Actually, let's make some other moves first, I guess. Let's move here, this should be fine. The information that you get from the motion tracker is just amazing. Moving out. So it looks like we're about to get embroiled in a little bit of a firefight right here. Uh, do I have dead eye already? I do. So my sniper is going to be a pretty reliable source of damage against these. And there's the contact. Oh, I thought that hit. I thought that hit too. No, he was shooting a rock. Okay. Um, I should probably have known that they were not standing still. That's really not a bad scatter for us at all. Pretty sure I'll take that happily. Uh, neither of them's flying. One of them's easily flankable. That was just very, very fortunate. Nice shot. 
Oh, they're both very easily flankable. Right. <laughs> okay. So floaters, so far, I guess they're not so threatening looking, probably, to viewers. You just have to believe me, though. So. <laughs> These guys give me nightmares. Got more floaters. We don't know where. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh, 11. 11. So it may have looked optimistic to you guys when I was saying that small UFOs were worth 150 each, but when you get 44 bucks out of a meld canister, it starts to add up pretty quick. I think the outsider is just inside this UFO. I think I have a very easy breach on him here actually. So this mission's going very nicely. This is what I'm used to missions feeling like. I guess when you bring battle scanners and no rookies, probably that helps a lot. My soul can grab that next turn. There is another melt to our right. I think I'm just giving that up. Hearing the outsider. Okay. Three more. That's why we bring Deadeye, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, nice. Uh, this time we've got one of them flying. I'm just gonna tile scan. I saw this guy on the motion tracker, so he must be like right here, right? He's right there. Okay, so I need to not wake him up. It shouldn't be too hard. Oh, this guy's not even flying. Oh, this is wonderful. This is my favorite day. Well, let's tag. Oh, I don't actually have hollow. Hmm. I don't have that much heavy cover to work with. I may use my smoke grenade here. Yeah, I could do that. I could move my assault here. Then he's like flankable potentially though. Mm. Well, let's kill the front guy. Let's start with that. Dead and gone. <laughs> Damn beautiful, guys. Heading there now. This is just gorgeous. I'm going to set up a two-turn play with a rocket and some suppression right now. Please don't pull a pot on our left. Okay. Got it. Now, if I'm absolutely rapid about this, I might get the Mel Canister to our right just by clearing the map so quickly. Not going to make any assumptions just yet, but it's a possibility. I suppose I might as well take this shot. Since fortunately there's no chance of friendly fire. <laughs> Pun completely unintentional. But I was shooting at officer friendly there. Let's get suppression on this. Oh! I did have hollow targeting. It was on my gunner. This game gets complicated pretty quickly with how diverse the tech trees are and how many different soldiers you end up using. What you gonna do, floater? Yep, that's what I thought. 
So we didn't need the smoke grenade, he only had a 1% anyway. Let's try to drop a rocket right on this floater's head. Okay. Uh, it was close enough. I'm going to use hollow targeting here. I'm just going to assume that it's dead this turn. I have smoke grenades if I fail to kill it somehow. But it's very unlikely that it survives. Oh my god, you guys. Don't do this to me now. They've been doing so well. Oh, you... Please. Friends. Oh, you know it's going to be the medic who gets the kill. All right. Next turn, I'm going to try to kill this outsider. I'm sort of curious what happens if I move here. Let's just try it. That's sort of what I thought would happen. Okay, well, let me know how that works out for you, outsider. Just gonna let everybody watch. Is there any chance that I fail this kill? No, because I have hollow targeting. Still no intact power sources. Damn. I think I might put the experience on friendly. Yeah, I'll put the experience on friendly here. Okay, is that it? Whew. That was... That was very easy. Okay, we could have brought a rookie or two on that one. Excellent work, Commander. I'm impressed you were able to recover so much of the melt substance without any casualties. Once again, we're putting hollow on our scout. 436.70 to 444.72. So, 8 will, 2 aim, no hit points. Yeah, it's so so. Slightly below average, I think. I think I'll make friendly into a uh, an officer. We have an intact flight computer. We got 24 melts. We weren't quite fast enough for the third canister, unfortunately. Five floater corpses. The corpses, floater corpses come with an Illyrium and alloy each, so those really start to add up very quickly. And... We're just gonna sell it all straight away. <laughs> Unfortunately, for those of you who are Meld fans. So that we can grab another Interceptor. I'm going to put this one over... No, I'll put it over H again. It would have been nice to get that North American Continent bonus, huh? Three Stingrays, one Avalanche. That's fine. We can shoot down a small scout if it shows up. Good mission. It's amazing how quickly the roster starts to look sparse, but sparse, sparse. We have a lot of soldiers coming out of wounds as well, pretty soon. Have a new interceptor. Puke Shaw, I like it. <laughs> That's lovely. It's basically what I wanted. Okay, cool. Mmm, I can't be building scopes right now, can I? Not really. Alright. Okay. Let's get my face out of the way for a little bit. 
my hotkey to change to the no webcam uh, profile or whatever happens to open up engineering. So, sorry about that. Oh, cool. Cool stuff. 12 days on satellites, 15 days on beam lasers. Oh wow, beam lasers are actually coming in significantly before the end of the month. I was underestimating my research team. Look at those guys go. So I'm gonna need to build some laser rifles, I guess. Okay. We can do that. Like I said, my budget was uh, not spending all that much. I'm a little bit concerned that we've only had one mission in five days. I don't want them to stack all the missions toward the end of the month particularly much. Commander, we're receiving several ah. urgent requests for assistance. There are abductions in progress at each marked site on the hologlobe. Excellent, much better. So we have a swarming abduction in China. And I'll just shut up. Got an urban block too, which I always have trouble with. So again, we're going to be going with Specialists Plus only. This one will be a much, much tougher mission than that UFO was. The UFO was a bit of a walk in the park. Brandon Hicks, a good rocketeer. Hicks is a terrible, terrible scout. <laughs> He's got slightly above average aim though, still. And he's quick. He just has no hit points. That's sort of a problem. Maybe I'll wait on using him until the marksman scope is done. But I could really use that hollow. Never mind. Let's bring Peter Van Dorn. Bring a good assault. This is my terrible infantry, yeah? Yeah, he is real bad. This guy will be better. Okay. Decent infantry. And I think an engineer decked out with four high explosive grenades. So we're going with no sniper. We don't have a sniper with Deadeye available, which could be good against floaters, but when you don't have Deadeye, your snipers aren't really much better than anybody else against floaters anyway. And on an urban block, what's the sniper really going to do for us? I'm gonna go with Hiroko Yamamoto. She got good base hit points. Load her up with four high explosive grenades. I'm also gonna give her a shotgun. My assault's got a shotgun. Close combat specialist, ceramic plate. I'll give him a smoke grenade in case we don't want to be moving in with him. Infantry with Five base hit points. I think still I want ceramic plate and med kit. At this point, my soldiers start getting specialized enough that like I have my cover destruction here, so I don't need like four of the other people in the squad to also have cover destruction. I can start to give people equipment which really jives with what they want to do. I'm going to switch this around a little bit. Let's give Van Dorn a second med kit. Give Milani the tracker. Hicks I'll give... No, the smoke grenade really doesn't make any sense on the guy who's going to shoot last or first. So let's go smoke grenade here. Uh, med kit here. Rocketeer with lots of rockets, I think that's very important for a swarming abduction here. These things can get really, really, really gross. Okay. Like, you can end up activating eight floaters at once, and there's just not much you can do against eight floaters at once. It's a nasty, nasty time. Uh, let's send the team, though. 
If we come away from this alive, it should give us enough money to get started on a couple of scopes, which will be nice. Strike one. Prepare for landing. We're heading into China for the next operation. Mm. Panic is spreading throughout a major city as the aliens move through the streets. We have to get a handle on this situation. I've had some nasty experiences with Mighty Card in my life. Alright, I'll see you guys next time for Operation Red King.